Now, lyrically, was it all Billy? Did you write anything? Did 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 any of the other guys, or was or was Billy pretty much the guy for like writing all the lyrics? Uh, Bill did a majority of it, yeah. And usually, I know that John did write a couple songs and do the lyrics for it. But on Private Hell, uh, a majority of it was Billy. And then when Abominations came out, it was kind of divi divided among the three of us, like between me and John and Bill, but Bill still did have a very, you know, because it's, if you let the vocalist handle the lyrics, you have, it, it's a lot easier to believe what they're saying, rather than it's like them reading off a script that you do them or something. Right, no, no, totally, totally. You know, I was also going to ask you about the song Sword, Sword Swallower, because it always, like, you know, I'm familiar with the record, so I don't think this anymore, but that song literally feels like it ends, and then it comes back, at the end and where it stops before it comes back, you would think, okay, that's a perfect place to end it for a hardcore punk song. Was there anything with that? Was there anything like thought like in the writing process? Like, okay, Hey, we're going to, we're going to kind of show people like something, you know, we're once again, going to keep people guessing with um, something like that. Yeah. Keep in mind, this was, was over 30 years ago, but if I remember correctly, I, I think, Things like that were kind of a joke where we would be rehearsing and stop the song and then just kind of do this little nudge thing where we'll move the guitars and do another one. And let's do another one. Just kind of just kind of crack ourselves up. And somehow it ended up sticking in the song. I mean, I the other guys in the band could probably correct me if I'm wrong, but I seem to remember that's how it was where we would just do these things at practice. Sometimes we would even change instruments. Um, in fact, on Abominations, there's a song called Intro, where Billy plays guitar on it. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. So we would just, just, it was more like something to just entertain ourselves. Well, that's what's so interesting about, I, I find bands, especially like in like the early stages, because it seems like you guys were not a band too long before you went in the studio and did, and did that record. And I guess what I find so interesting is just, it seems like bands, when they're starting out, will do the things that you're talking about. And then and then something sort of happens as people get older and maybe get more mature or whatever it is as musicians, that that sort of stops. Do you think that that's true or do you think that, that, that you know, it was just kind of who you guys were? And so if you guys were still a band today, um, you might still be kind of pulling those same things. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think that that's a good point, Evan. Um, some bands, usually when they, they get together and first start out, they, they have like this groundwork that they want to, you know, pull from. And it's it's like, especially if you look at ads like in Craigslist or something, that would be very, very specific, okay, you know, emo band or whatever, just, okay, this is it, you know, we're not going to budge on this, where we didn't really put restrictions on each other, as I mentioned earlier, and that's just kind of, it, we weren't afraid to try something. We weren't afraid to take chances where if we don't pull directly from the hardcore handbook, you know, people aren't going to like us. And I know we did catch, you know, some flack from people, uh, whether, you know, okay, that passage just sounds too metal or, you know, these lyrics are, they're not what they're looking for in the hardcore realm at this time. And it, it kind of was restricted. And I didn't realize that until some of the shows we played. And I was like, wow, so there's just like, you know, this band sounds like the band before it, this band sounds like the band before it, and then let's throw Haywire in there. Just either we would get these very puzzled looks, people would walk away, or people would like it. Right. So, at, yeah. So at first I'm like, okay, well, is this kind of repressing what everyone else in the band wants to do, or is it kind of cool? And actually, we, we stopped caring. <laughs> right, we right. Well, you know, um... And, it, and this is actually another, you know what, this is actually another question that, that I will ask after I, 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 have, a, I have some more. Um, how did you guys end up going to Europe? Just because you, you guys went to Europe at a time where bands going to Europe was not, I mean, I'm not saying that it wasn't as easy, but it just didn't happen the way, you know, like the only other band that I knew after you guys going to Europe, you know, that went around that time was on Farside. And, you know, it, it just... It was um, bands weren't going over to Europe 
with regularity. How did that? How did that happen? Okay, uh, actually, this is a question that Billy could probably answer better than I could because he was very much the you know guy that just pulled everything together for this. I just, if I remember correctly, we were playing at the Anti Club, and there was a gentleman there that Bill was talking to, and after, at the end of the night, he said, you know, he talked to, you know, the, the, the three of us and said, what would you guys think about going to Europe? And I'm like, oh, okay, well, when, you know, are just specific? So little by little, he just had more details, more details. And then finally he says, okay, well, th these are the dates. This is when they would like us to go over there and we'll be touring with this German band. And I was like, okay. So, you know, that, that pulled together and um, th that's how it happened. Gotcha. 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 And it was and yeah, and then there was a German label called We Bite uh, that did put out our our releases overseas. Yes. Yeah. The second, it, the second album was only available as an import. You couldn't get it here. And the European version of Private Hell did have some bonus tracks on it that was different from the one here. It's it, and now these records. It's interesting because they have gone up in value. Like, I mean, if you were, because, and I, I know that mainly because of the seven inches that I put out for my bands. Like every so often someone will say, Oh, I saw an ice seven inch in DC for like, for like 50 bucks. So I can imagine what the Haywire stuff, you know, just because like the pedigree within that, with, within that band at one time, wasn't there a re-release where it was Private Hell and Abominations on We Bite? Like, or, or there was another, like, like wasn't there a re-release at some point, like, maybe 20 years ago or something? Yes, and I may have the title wrong, but I believe it, they called it the Long Beach Hardcore Pack. Okay. It was, it was a, a double set. I think that was, was the title they gave us. Gotcha. Because um, what, was, what was interesting is, uh, maybe I saw it at the time we're in Europe at the merch table. I don't remember it, but there was a split seven inch that they put out with us in the band. Uh, no, no, yes, no, with the German band that we toured with. And I didn't know there was a release done of that. And I was at uh, um, Vinyl Solution in Huntington Beach this back in the 90s. And I'm looking through and I, I found a copy on clear vinyl. And I was like, I don't remember this coming out. And so I ended up buying it. And uh, so that was one of those mystery releases I, I didn't know was out, but I said maybe when I was in Europe, I saw it just it didn't, you know, register or something. Gotcha. But, <laughs> yeah. And there was a there was a purple uh pressing done of Private Hell back in the eighties. I know that on purple vinyl. I don't know how many of those were done. I have one. And was that done um, by new new beginnings or no? New beginnings, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Um a lot of people no Motorhead, like, and you just hold up Lemmy, and I don't know if you remember, but there was a song that I once wrote called A Tribute to Lemmy, which I sang about you in the song. This is, like, like decades ago. Decades you know, ago. I, I do, and I want to say, were you doing, like, some sort of El Duce vocals, like, from the Mentors I, or something? I, maybe. I was in Tony's, I was in Tony's bedroom, and it, that that's when he would just, like, sort of write, like, a song, and then I would sing over it, and then... But what I did was I eventually compiled all that, so I started handing out a tape of like, "Hey, this is my this is my band." But um, so you guys covered "Bomber" by um, Motorhead, and yeah. um, and it's actually a big it's actually because of you and because of the young ones that I actually started listening to Motorhead like a lot, like bought bought their tapes back in back in the day, and um. A lot of people know them, and they all oh, let me, and they do this, and they, you know, Ace of Spades. Why did you guys go, I mean, Bomber's a great song. It's awesome. But what was it about that song that you thought would be great for Haywire to, to cover? Uh, actually, it, it was a happy accident. Uh, we were just jamming on it at a rehearsal. Um, I started, I was playing it, and John knew the changes. And Vadim was just, he was like this encyclopedia of metal. At the time, you know, besides hardcore, he just knew a lot about Euro metal, like a lot of it. So we just started playing it at, at a rehearsal, and Vadim just fell right into it because he, he was familiar with it. And Bill was like, he, if I remember correctly, he was like, what song is that? I know that's Bomber by Motorhead. Bill was like, that sounds really cool. Uh, so 
it wasn't so much that we picked that one in particular. It's one that we nailed immediately. Gotcha. So, yeah, so that, that's why it, it stuck. A few bands later, Carrie Nation took the stage. Shortly after that, Judge, a band from New York, took the stage. Andrew and I left a few songs into their set. As I was leaving, Nelson introduced me to Greg Brown, Scott Sundahl, Paul T, and other members of a group known as the Orange County Sloth Crew. Eventually, they would nickname me Mushnik, which was a character I had been in a high school play. On the ride home, I had no idea that those people I had just met would become and would be the gateway to the best friends I would ever have.